Hey, hey everyone, and it's that time of the week when I come out and talk to you on behalf of Bonviv Spike Seltzer. So first and foremost, I hope that all of you are doing well, are safe. Um, you know, it's a crazy time and uh, the only thing that sort of gives me solace is that the entire world is together in this. So as you know, or maybe you don't know, and if for new people who, is, who are joining us, I'd like to say that um, Bon Vib Spike Seltzer and me were going to launch a campaign, which obviously didn't end up happening because of where the world is. And uh, we decided to use those resources that we had set aside for the campaign to highlight women who are, you know, rising above these challenging times, doing so much to us, um, for us, and being able to like look beyond um, themselves and, you know, going out there and doing something for the world in this uh, very difficult time. Um, and why this was perfect to do with Bon Viv for me, and it, it means so much that um, Bon Viv thinks like that, is because I think it's so important for us to highlight people who are going above and beyond and doing what um, whatever they can. So Bon Viv has always stood for women and um, I've always stood for women and supporting women that end up doing extraordinary things. And I'm going to be picking uh, up four of these women this, this week again. Um, last week I had technical glitch with the Instagram live, which a lot of my friends have told me, by the way, is a real thing. So there might be a glitch again this time when I have a backup plan. So I want to introduce you to these four incredible, extraordinary women. So the first incredible woman, one second, hold on, let me get my papers. The first incredible woman that um, I'm going to highlight with Bon Viv is Pooja Chandrasekhar from Virginia. Now, Pooja, you were nominated by Patsy. We're nominating Pooja Chandrasekhar, who founded the COVID-19 Health Literacy Project, which is at COVID-19 Literacy, by the way, which you guys should follow, to create and translate COVID-19 info into 37 plus languages for non-English speakers and immigrants. That is amazing. I mean, thank you, Pooja, for thinking uh, of people that, you know, sometimes d don't get thought about or get left behind because of something which is just so thoughtful. Um, I'm going to try and <laughs> invite her to my Instagram live. And if that doesn't work, like I told you, I have a plan B. So let's see if this works. Okay. Mm. Hilarious. Let's see. Okay. Let's go. Pooja, come on, man. Why can't I see you? Thanks, guys, for all your requests, which are drowning out Pooja. <laughs> I can't find her. But I told you I have a backup plan. So I'm going to grab my other phone and call her. Okay, let's do this. That's how you do it when technology doesn't help. Hi. Hi, Pooja. How are you? Hi, I'm so good. Um, I just wanted to, obviously technology failed me. So I wanted to be able to do it in a way where people can see you, people can see me, um, and uh, also not be failed by technology. So first and foremost, tell me, that um, I'm so touched by your story and I want to understand. Can you guys hear her well? I'm going to turn it up. I just wanted to understand, like, what made you do this? Yeah, of course. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. I'm a huge fan. Um, oh, thank it just you. means so much to see the work that you're doing to support women. Uh, so, to tell you a little bit about my story, so I'm a medical student and that gives me a really unique vantage point. So, on right. one side, I'm seeing my friends and colleagues and mentors who are on the front lines as clinicians. But on the other hand, I'm also seeing my community and seeing how they're impacted by the public health challenges of this pandemic. Um, and speaking from, to community-based organizations, what I heard over and over again 
with how immigrants and non-English speaking populations are affected by this pandemic. And the reality is that there's not much COVID-19 information that's completely I I completely agree with you because everyone ha- gets different information and different information exactly. online, which is why I find what you did so innovative and so Absolutely. smart. Thank you. Thank you. And I think it's also personal for me. My parents are both immigrants from India. And me too! Not, well, my parents are immigrants. And, and just not, just, there's no information that's available in South Asian languages. Completely. Um, so I think that personal aspect of it, as well as just speaking to community organizations and seeing the need for this, is what motivated me to start this project. Well, but I'm just, very proud of you, general. and I want to tell you... Just thank you so much. It's women like you that really yeah. inspire other people to be like, they can do something. You, you know, it's not about thinking and sitting at home and saying, you know, I'm getting bored, but actually putting something together that will be of help to everyone else. And you did exactly that. I'm going to give a shout out to Pooja's. Um, okay, so she founded the COVID-19 Health Literacy Project, which is at COVID-19 Literacy. So go and check it out if you want any information. Um, and a big shout out to you and a big thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks guys. Thank you. Say thank bye you for Bye. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That was so sweet. Pooja, you're amazing. I'm really glad I got to talk to you. And even though technology failed me again, um, I had a backup plan. So thanks Pooja for, for your story. Now I'm going to tell you guys about our next hero. Um, now our next hero is Rose Lindbergh from Georgia. Rose, you were nominated by Valerie. Rose is a paramedic who's been working with EMS for 10 years. She's now a lieutenant at the Thomas County EMS department. She also teaches medical classes to incoming EMS students and the sheriff department. Since the beginning of COVID-19, Rose has been a pillar for our community. She has put in hundreds of hours of work since this pandemic started caring for patients, putting her life and health on the line every single day. Rose is also a mother to two beautiful kids. Um, she has had she has had to send her kids to stay with their grandparents to lower their risk of becoming infected. That's got to be heartbreaking. In addition to all of this, she's still going above and beyond for her family that lives across the country. She regularly checks on everyone and even has groceries sent to those she knows are struggling. She is so used to taking care of everyone that she deserves this recognition. Rose, thank you for sacrificing for your community, family, not only in this crisis, but every single day. We see you. Thank you, Rose, for your enormous heart, your tireless dedication to not just your family and your community. Thank you, Valerie, for highlighting Rose for us. Um, and it's, it's incredible to hear these stories, and I've heard so many of the stories of parents who've had to who are in the medical profession or essential services that have had to separate themselves from their children. And that must be, I can't even imagine, um, extremely hard. But thank you so much, Valerie, and thank you, Rose, for everything you do. Next up, I'd like to say thank you to Richa, Richa Persnani from Pennsylvania. Richa, you were nominated by your mother, Lalita. I'm nominating my daughter, Dr. Richa Persnani. Richa Boo Boo for this promotion. She's an OBGYN resident in Philadelphia, PA. And this has been her dream career since she was a little child, despite of being a first generation child with many obstacles throughout her life, she always preserved and overcame any challenges while still loving and caring for those around her. During this COVID-19 pandemic, while we're safe at home, she's at the hospital for 14 hour shifts, taking care of vulnerable women who need access to healthcare. This include pregnant women who are delivering babies, women with gynecological concerns. Her parents never forget her and she touches the lives of so many women and young girls. She's kind, compassionate, fearless. She empowers all the women around her. She's the perfect representation of someone who's showing resilience during these difficult times and positively impacting those around her. Richa, I mean, thank you so much, Lalita, for sending in Richa's story and I am the daughter of an OBGYN and I remember my mom being gone many nights because she was delivering babies and especially in this time I have to say thank you so much Richa for doing what you do. Um, it takes people like you to do what you do so that we can be at home and um, you know feel safe. 
So thank you so much for that. You're a rock star. All right. Our fourth woman that we are grateful for today is April. <laughs> April Misselkey. Oh my gosh, April, don't kill me. If I said it right, people say my name wrong. Um, April Misselkey from Kentucky. April, you were nominated by your colleague, Jessica. I'm honored to work with April, who's a registered nurse in the ER. Nursing is, the second career, is her second career, but she has proved it to be her true calling. I am nominating her for the hashtag Together Women Rise because even during this pandemic, she continues to put others first. Not only has she supplied sanitized detergent for co-workers and brought others coveted bags of potatoes in her spare time, she's created a fundraiser for a co-worker in need by selling ER Strong t-shirts. That's cool. I want one of those. Um, it was such a success, she had to spread it out into other departments and ERs for further causes. April is so deserving for this award and I know it would help her and her family out. Her husband just got laid off due to failing labor force from COVID. He will stay at home and take care of their adult special needs daughter while she continues to work in the AR during this COVID crisis and raise money for other co-workers who might be affected during this time. She's a hero. Putting others first despite unknown circumstances and the fear that COVID has created. ER strong. April strong. Wow. Thank you so much, April, for finding your calling and, and being so creative in the ways that you take care of so many people outside of just you, but also your family. Um, you're such an inspiration and such an example to what people can do and people can how people can be together at this time. Just look around you and understand that there are so many people out there in the world that need your help and do something as creative as April just did. Um, you're amazing. A big, big shout out to you and to your friend, um, Jessica. Um, thank you for, for introducing me to April. This is amazing. Um, well, first and foremost, put this away. I want to say thank you to all of you for joining me here every week for doing this. I also want to take a time to say thank you to all these four incredible women. Um, and I hope our contribution can make a difference in your life. And I hope that, um, you know, you're safe, your families are safe, all of you listening out there. Um, I hope you're all safe. Um, and I'd like to also say thank you to Bon Viv because of which, because of who we are here. So let me take one of these and say cheers to you, Bon Viv. Thank you so much for for doing this. It it will make a big difference to to the people that are working so hard in the community, which is it's a crazy time. So thank you for being one of my brands that came on board to do something which gives back to the community. Um, I want to say thank you to all of you and I will see you next week. <laughs>